So module seven in this class is all about gender and I'm going to be the first one to say that gender is a massive thing. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that we're just not going to be able to cover in this unit. Um, there's lots of classes that come after that that absolutely touch on gender. Just so you know, like this is a very brief introduction. It is not everything. Um, and the first thing we have sort of have to do to talk about gender, at least what I'm going to do, is go back to our ideas about postmodernism from like way back in chapter one. Um, and postmodernism, if you guys remember talking about it, is really all about how we create the idea of truth and how power is absolutely implicated and shapes what we consider to be true, what we consider to be natural, what we consider to be inevitable. Okay. And that's an important sort of piece um, around that. This is why your, do your, your textbook talks about not just discourses, but elite discourses of gender. Um, and those are sort of constructions about reality and like ideas about what gender is and how it functions that are emphasized and created through p people in positions of power um, that by and large create particular images of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman. Um, and the thing about elite discourses in this space is that the way that they work um, and the way that they sort of function in society is that an individual would need to justify not fitting those discourses, but we don't ask those discourses to justify themselves. So one of the things that you'll get to as we look through the content of all of those discourses is that there are a, a number of positions in those discourses that aren't objectively um, like justifiable. They don't actually make sense, right? There's nothing inherent about, you know, the biology of a woman such as it is that makes her a better teacher or a worse engineer than a man would be. Um, those are all sort of discourses. They're all constructed. Um, we just treat them in a lot of ways um, as sort of natural. Um, and these are discourses that are about the way the world we expect the world to be. They don't necessarily relate to how people actually are. So to talk about an elite discourse of gender with a gender binary, right, that establishes that you are either a man or a woman, um, and this is what the category of man looks like and this is what the category of woman looks like as a discourse, that doesn't actually need to apply to everyone. It just needs to function as the thing that everyone expects to apply so people who don't fit sort of feel the need to justify their own positions. Um, and these discourses in contemporary society are really fundamentally dualistic in the sense that they're really sort of separate, separate things out into like two categories and they don't deal well with really anything outside of that. So you have sort of, we've got to talk about dualisms like um, male and female, right? Like, and we don't really talk about anything outside of that. Um, we sort of talk about, and, and this comes up in the presumption of things like, well, talking about the opposite sex, right? That's sort of a way of communicating that you only really expect that there are two. Um, and we can also talk about sort of some assumptions in that sort of idea about a duality and a gender binary. Um, when we talk about, for example, the, the expectation, and there's a whole lot of discuss, discussion around sort of by erasure, the erasure of bisexuality in this, but the idea that you are either attracted to men or you are attracted to women, like it's a binary choice. You cannot have both. You cannot have neither. You cannot have any number of other combinations. Um, so <clears throat> that binary and that assumption of binary shows up in a lot of places in our society. Um, and I'm not here to defend it or to say that it's a good thing, but to sort of say that that assumption of a binary is really, really important socially um, in that a lot of the things that happen in our society are sort of dependent and are based on that. Okay? Um, outside of gender binaries, you get a lot, uh, outside of that elite discourse of, of, of gender binary, you have a lot of discussion and your textbook goes into this relatively well around sort of gender non-conforming. Um, so either people who identify as women but do not meet the expectations of what it means to be a woman. Um, there's a lot of sort of ways of talking about that. Um, Non-cisgender people, so people whose um, reproductive biology in sort of broad senses or chromosomal sort of genetic stuff doesn't match their perception of 
their own gender and their own identities. Um, you can also in sort of include this kind of converse, in this kind of conversation around sort of non gender non-conforming discussions, um, ideas about people who are homosexual who are attracted to uh, members of their own gender or it's sort of whose attraction is sort of set up otherwise because a lot of this sort of assumption about what it means to be a man, and this is a big discussion in terms of our conversation about um, hegemonic and hypermasculinity like, that's coming up, but there's a lot of discussion about what it means to be a man that is fundamentally about the pursuit and the success in accessing women's bodies. And so if you don't do that, then you're sort of in this gender non-conforming place. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the idea of the two-spirit term. Um, the two-spirit term is discussed in your book. Um, it's sort of a way for indigenous communities across North America to communicate the overlap of their gender identity and their indigenous sort of culture and spaces. Um, and that th that is sort of an important piece because if you've never sort of studied this, um, you maybe don't know, there are hundreds of indigenous cultures across North America um, and they have different ideas, they have different stories, they have different traditions. They're really, really different. Um, but this is again a conversation about elite discourses, right? In that the people with power, and we're going to talk about racialized and ethnic sort of based power dynamics in our next unit, but um, people with power weren't particularly willing to embrace and understand all of those hundreds of different cultures. And so there are a number of people who who identified in ways that were more specific within their own cultures um, in terms of particular roles and whether or not they are sort of a man in a woman's body or are they someone who have who has traits of men and women and is that a mixture or is that a different thing entirely? All kinds of very, very different ideas, many of which sort of step out of that binary term. Um, but they needed a way to communicate that in sort of a, a Western colonialist context. Um, and so the indigenous communities came together in Winnipeg, of all places, for sort of some CanCon. Um, there's an idea there about sort of using the term two-spirit to communicate that or two-spirited, um, which is great. And, and it works in a lot of ways. But I want to use it in some ways to sort of really point out how strong the emphasis of those elite discourses and that binary can be because in a many indigenous cultures right it's not too spirited there are like six five or six genders and so in that context like it does like that the idea of like two spirit and being part male and part female doesn't resonate it doesn't make sense but in order to create something that would be communicative and understood in sort of Western Eurocentric cultures, you chose this thing that nevertheless speaks to a binary and connects to that idea of a binary. Um, so those elite discourses show up everywhere. And one of the reasons that I sort of want to emphasize that is that it's easy to look at something like the discussion of a gender binary and go, oh, okay, well, that means it's social and that means it's just belief and that means we can change it. And that's true. You abs we, we absolutely can, as a society, change all of those sort of expectations and sort of move away from that binary. But I don't want anyone to come out of this thinking that that's easy. Um, there are a lot of pressures and a lot of ways, sort of like interlocking systems that create the system we have now. And change is not easy. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not important. Um, I just don't want to give the impression that like we have this system that doesn't work for a number of people because people are too lazy to change it. Um, that's not entirely true. The, the, the work of change here is quite challenging or can be.